Hey there, everyone. It's Nick Dutman back here on my podcast where we talk about social media marketing trends and tips as well as digital marketing uh, trends and tips. Hopefully everybody has enjoyed uh, the couple episodes of my podcast up to so far. It seems like uh, we've gotten people downloading. So the people that uh, have watched it, thank you so much uh, for following along and uh, listening to uh, um, hopefully what I get to you is, uh, is good expertise um, and tips and things that can help you uh, in your goals as far as from uh, social media marketing and digital marketing uh, as well. So I really, really appreciate uh, your support. So if you uh, don't already, uh, I do have a blog too that I maintain, and that is nicholasdetman.blogspot.com. Again, nicholasdetman.blogspot.com. Feel free to subscribe uh, to the blog. Uh, where I post regular updates uh, and tips and news stories about um, the social media marketing and digital marketing uh, business. So got a lot to cover uh, here today, so we're going to jump right into it. And one of the first things I want to go over with you today uh, is kind of what is, uh, excuse me, what Facebook has really been kind of dealing with for the last several years and really kind of what started to why well, I th- feel like is anger a lot of its users, um, and that is the volume of political content that's been on Facebook over the last several years. Uh, and, and I know I'm not alone on this, where it's just it's now getting t- too much. And if, if it looks like from what Facebook is saying, uh, they're finally going to start addressing it, um, as uh, some of their latest reports are showing uh, diminished use. Uh, of their platform, so it's, um, and they're also on the flip side of that, seeing growth um, by their competitors, such as TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Well, oh, I mean, t- technically Instagram is a product of Facebook, but um, but still specifically with TikTok, like, even LinkedIn, Twitter, and other platforms are uh, are growing and are growing quite well. Uh, Facebook is like, we need to take action, and it appears that they're going to do that. So uh, the story that uh, appeared on socialmediatoday.com, um, the story says, uh, and it's a quote uh, from Facebook, it says, as Mark Zuckerberg mentioned in our recent earnings call, one common piece of feedback we hear is that people don't want political content to take over their news feed. Um, That is definitely the case here. Um, That's the end quote there. Uh, Over the next few months, we'll work to better understand people's varied preferences for political content and test a number of approaches based on those insights. As a first step, we'll temporarily reduce the distribution of political content and newsfeed for a small percentage of people in Canada, Brazil, and Indonesia, and then later the U.S. in the coming weeks. Uh, Actually, I think I just saw it and I just moved across maybe just a few minutes ago. Uh, at this recording, that um, the, some of the political content in Australia is going to be blocked um, on Facebook. So Facebook has uh, finally recognized that uh, they've got a lot of people angry with their platform, with the volume of political content uh, that's been surfacing through their um, news feeds, and uh, Facebook is finally caught on and said, you know, we need to address this. And again, going back to seeing the growth of the other platforms and their competitors like Snapchat, tw- uh, TikTok, Pinterest, um, and those platforms. So this is a, a long overdue move, I, in my opinion, by Facebook, and um, certainly goes to show that they have uh, finally starting to listen to what people have been screaming about for the last several, almost seemingly last several years. So, so that's good for Facebook, and uh, and that could be a big thing for us as marketers. Uh, if people recognize that and they feel like they can start gravitating back to Facebook, um, that could be a big thing to follow. So lots to, lot to untangle there and definitely will be worth keeping an eye on going forward. Uh, speaking of uh, Instagram, there's a, a new feature for anybody that uses Hootsuite, uh, such as myself and what that is. If you're not familiar with it, it's a third party, it's a third party uh, scheduling program or platform where you can connect your social media accounts and schedule posts. Um, across multiple platforms at the same time. It's a nice little handy tool, especially if you're going to be on vacation or um, something like that. Uh, I mean, obviously other platforms, like well, specifically Facebook, does allow you to do that within its own um, on its own site, but um, there are others that don't let you do that, like Twitter is certainly one of those where you can schedule tweets um, ahead of time. So what Hootsuite is, uh, is allowing people to do 
uh, is be able to schedule their Instagram stories to uh, through Hootsuite, even post stories through Hootsuite or even or schedule them on Hootsuite. So that's a I think it's a really neat thing uh, for Hootsuite and Instagram to collaborate on, and certainly make things easier from a scheduling standpoint if you want to hit that specific time spot. Uh, with a with an Instagram story because stories are certainly um, a growing uh, tool um, in social media and, and social media engagement as we're seeing with well with IG's uh, reels uh, as well as TikTok short stories Snapchats I mean look at how many different platforms have have uh, have adopted these shorts these stories formats so uh, Hootsuite did give a heads up on two points related to this. Uh, the publishing method is an Instagram limitation for all third-party tools, and as well, this feature is not available for free plan members. So um, you can uh, dive more into that on my blog I've, as I've got that up there. And then going back uh, to another thing with face or with Instagram is uh, how to brand yourself on Instagram. Uh, Instagram is one of those platforms seeing a, l- a lot of growth, um, and it's a web and it's a platform that derives strolling or relies heavily on images whether it's still or video so uh, digitalmarketing.org released a blog on how to brand yourself and it gave you 12 tips and I'll try and uh, rattle them off here so one is understand your goals and that's really kind of the the thing that you should be look considering regardless but that's certainly the case on Instagram so things like drive traffic to your website uh, establishing yourself as an expert growing a network Reaching audiences, share stories, sell products um, are among the many things. Uh, optimize your profile, um, and that includes doing something like picking a recognizable username, something for people uh, that's easy for people to renem- remember. Uh, choose a unique profile picture, so again, something that jumps out to people when they see it. And then optimize your Instagram bio. Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, must have been something I ate this morning, so bear with me. Um, so yeah, so optimize your Instagram bio to uh, include words that you want people to look for or to help define what you are as a, a business or an organization. Um, definitely use hashtags in your content. I know several months ago, uh, Instagram announced some changes where um, in regards to searching uh, for content, hashtags weren't going to be as important, but there is still a high level of importance to use hashtags. And then using links in Instagram, you cannot use them on posts. And I know that's something I really would love for them to adapt, but um, you can put that at least in your bio. So certainly make uh, your link on your bio worth um, worth users to click on. So if it's like to a specific website you want them to go to, um, you can obviously change it whenever you want. So uh, pick a theme. Um, and that establishes you as a brand. Um, creating content, obviously, is, is certainly important. Uh, be transformational, not transactional. Kind of try not to be too much like a salesperson. That's kind of what that means. Reply to all comments and DMs. Uh, post consistently. I know this is something we talk about a number of times, but uh, it's understanding what your users like and kind of what pattern they like um, is very important. And... Um, can definitely help with your engagements and your following. Uh, tag top brands with large following. So if you're in a partnership with a very large organization or something like that that has a large Instagram following, tag them, and uh, that establishes a connection and, and a and a relationship that could really bode well for you. Uh, share user generated content. Use geo tagging. Uh, use the swipe up only. Uh, use the swipe up feature. Unfortunately, the problem with that one is only available to 10,000 followers. I really wish, to, personally, I think that you, they wish they would do that for the other way around. I mean, obviously, you're trying to build a following, um, so using the swipe up could help those who have lower followings. So, uh, hopefully, that can be something maybe Instagram can notice later down the road. And then, probably most importantly, and it's something we always talk about, is tracking your analytics and watch your numbers. What are your numbers telling you? And, how, and make the appropriate adjustments uh, to those numbers. Uh, going back to Facebook, and uh, one of the new buzz um, things out there in terms of social media is this latest app. It's called Clubhouse. Uh, the Clubhouse is uh, really starting to grow, and it's starting to grow quickly. 
Um, it's an audio only social media platform. Uh, so per socialmediatoday.com, and given how fast it is, Clubhouse is an invite only audio slash social platform and has seen massive rise of late, going from 600,000 active users in December to more than 2 million a month later. That's seemingly sparked by Twitter, uh, or at least Twitter is caught on to it, that uh, they're going to do something similar with Spaces. And now uh, Facebook is also now looking to get on the X. So audio-only social media uh, could be um, a ne the next big thing here. Uh, so, I mean, Clubhouse is going to be one of those measuring sticks in terms of how this uh, format um, grows on people. So this is going to be another one to uh, be excited and look in and be interested in. And lastly, of course, the last, <laughs> I know it's more TikTok news, but uh, it, again, it's just re rehashing what I've been saying for the last several weeks, and even several months, if you've been following uh, the blog, is TikTok continues to play around with its platform and trying to find ways to increase its revenue and definitely assert itself as a leading uh, platform. Uh, you can certainly start making the argument that or, uh, TikTok is really kind of setting the bar in a lot of areas, specifically with short form videos. So, and then because of that, TikTok has seen great growth, and now they're seeing that growth and trying to utilize that and making sure they stay in that upward swing um, and that upward momentum they've built. So, they've got a couple things that they're uh, introducing, uh, either already have or plan to. Uh, one of those is rec recipe integration, something you would definitely see with uh, Pinterest. Um, this is going to be something very interesting as well uh, for TikTok. So per socialmediatoday.com, quote, as TikTok eyes the next stage of its development, providing options for creators to make money from their TikTok clips is key to maximizing its success. If creators can't make money on TikTok, they'll find ways to monetize their audience on other platforms. So in TikTok's case, that process is going to involve providing direct link options to enable creators and businesses to drive traffic and sales direct from the app. And kind of spinning off of that uh, is a development of e-commerce uh, options and um, teachings as well through TikTok. So definitely TikTok is, again, still something worth worth noting and it, it seems almost now daily that TikTok is testing something or want to unveil something to help it continue its ascent in the social media uh, universe and, and really I think it's doing a phenomenal job uh, of doing it. I think it's an interesting app for sure. It, it's really caught on um, given how many billions of downloads uh, it has accrued in really about four or five years. And we haven't seen the kind of growth and popularity in a Facebook or a social media app really ever. And, and that's really a credit to TikTok. They've got something figured out there. And people are, are responding and other platforms are responding. A lot of the short form videos that you see on the other platforms, such as the stories or reels from Instagram, are directly in, uh, as a build off of what TikTok has done. So, again, TikTok continues to be a thought leader in, in this, and uh, very well, I think they're very, they do a phenomenal job. And, and again, if you have not considered TikTok in your social media or digital media strategy, you know, it's certainly worth taking a look. Now, again, keeping in mind that you have to know who your audience is. TikTok tends to be, is its gen demographics are very young. We're talking high school and, and college students, uh, albeit the, the platform is starting to see some of the older um, audiences. Uh, we're talking about 30s and into their 40s, but still relatively young audience. So if you're kind of some, a business or an organization that serves those maybe 35, 40 and older, maybe TikTok may not quite be ready for you. But at the very least, get familiar with the platform. And that way, when it, if and when it comes time to where TikTok is needed in your uh, strategy, you're not going to be trying to play catch up. And uh, that's kind of a, a pretty good uh, piece of advice. And it's kind of why I do it. Um, I'm with organizations and uh, that don't really have a, a need for TikTok just based on their demographics. But I have the app and, and follow it regularly. 
just to familiarize myself with it so when uh, the time comes I'll be ready to integrate it into the strategies uh, that I need to implement so yeah so I kind of went through a lot of things there but there was a lot of good topics to discuss so hopefully everybody got uh, some good information today and uh, like I said before really appreciate everybody's uh, support and following uh, of this podcast and hopefully you uh, do get some information and tips and trends on uh, things that can uh, hopefully help you in what you're trying to achieve with your um, respective business or organization. So uh, again, uh, just a, one more plug. My blog is nicholasdetman.blogspot.com. Give that a follow and, a, and subscribe to that. Uh, or again, post a lot of news stories and, tr- um, and trend ideas and tips uh, about uh, social media marketing as well as digital marketing. So. Uh, Until next time, uh, thanks again for listening, and we will catch up with you later on. I will have more tips and trends and updates for you. So until then, uh, everybody have a good day, rest of your week, and we'll talk to you again soon.